New on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Hey, all of y'all, thank you so much for listening to the Men's Room Podcast. And thanks to our pals at the Advocates Law Firm for being great partners. Yes, even you, creepy, creepy, creepy Kyle. Seriously, though, if you'd been injured as a result of somebody else in your car, on your bike, walking across the street... Talk to our friends at the Advocates Law Firm and let them help you out. Yeah, they're the best injury lawyers around, and they want to make sure that you're not taken advantage of. Plus, your first consultation is free. It's simple. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact them today at advocateslaw.com. Hey, all, it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Back to the conversation. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Our question, I'm very happy not to live with or near someone anymore because of the time they did blank. And here come those emails from the men's room at KISW.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. A couple here from uh, today's question, guys. My father does not get along with his neighbor. I'm glad I don't live him uh, near him anymore. My dad is drinking on his day off while cleaning out his garage. At somewhere around 9 o'clock at night, he starts up his Harley. Apparently, he was really enjoying the new sound of those loud pipes because here comes the neighbor in his truck ripping up the gravel drive and skids to a stop in front of my dad. Neighbor starts yelling about how he needs to get up early. And my dad needs to cut it out since his bedroom is close to my dad's garage. My dad, as he tells the story, apologizes and the neighbor drives back, which is literally right next door. Fast forward an hour later. Cops show up at my dad's door while he's watching TV. As he's answering the door, he sees SWAT climbing over the fence and out from his bushes. The cops claim there was a report of someone shooting a pistol in the front yard of my dad's home. After convincing the cops that there wasn't any shooting, cops left, talked to the neighbor before leaving. There was no report filed, but that didn't stop my dad from looking up the public records and ordering the police call that they received about the shooting. On the recording, you can hear his neighbor reporting in a very scared tone that my dad is in the front yard emptying a pistol clip into the ground and he's acting erratic. You can even hear his wife in the background shrieking, saying, he's going back inside to reload. So his neighbor tried to get my dad murdered by cops over some revving of a motorcycle. Good God, man. Keep on rocking, guys. That from B-Dub. Guys had a neighbor for four years. It was a condo building. He lived next door. Guy wasn't right. Me or my wife would uh, say hi when we saw him in the parking lot or in the hall. He would snub us. Not a word or a grunt ever. I just figured he was antisocial until my older son, who was eight at the time, came in from the hall after checking the mail. I heard him say, okay, bye. As he came back in, I said, who are you talking to? He said, Matt. I said, who's that? He says, that's the man next door. I was blown away. As it's been two years, I didn't even know his name. I told my son, don't you talk to him. And he agreed. Then about six months later, my two kids are playing in the front yard of the building, and I look out, and this guy is sitting and talking to my kids. I lose my mind. I told my wife, and she knew I was going to go nuts. So she told me to stay, and she went out there. He got up and left and never said anything to my wife, just a weirdo. I told her I was going to talk to him. She said I was overreacting and that they were just talking about karate because my son, uh, sons are into it. All right. So a few days later, I see him in the hall, and I'm like, hey, Matt, what's up, dude? Nothing. I lose my ass. I followed him in the parking lot, stood in front of his car door and said, I know you talk because you talk to my kids. If you ever speak to my kids again, I'm going to hurt you. He just stared with dead eyes. I said, I'm not moving until we settle this. He finally said, I'll call the police. I said, do it right now. He just paced a bit and he finally said, I'll never speak to your kids. I said, if you do, just know I'm going to hurt you and left after that. I got a piece of mail by mistake and looked him up. No priors or anything. We bought a house and moved away 10 months later. Scary guy. Anyway, <laughs> love the show. Love you guys. That from Jay. Ah, uh, good times. <laughs> As we move on to the birthday request, all the guys, can I get a birthday shout out? Uh, and an oh my God, Jay, for my husband. Big bearded Bill, the truck driver. He listens to you guys every day on the road. Amazing husband, father, and friend. Happy 30th birthday to my beloved from Amy and the Littles from Quiet Time at the Beach. Oh my God, what the is that, bro? Holy guys, please wish my pog wife, Brittany, a happy 32nd birthday. 
Even though she is past her prime, I still love her. Oh, 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 wow. <laughs> oh. Please give her a bong rip with some German love. Thanks, guys. Appreciate what you do. That from Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, you might be past your prime, but I've been known to enjoy some spoiled milk from time to time. <laughs> yeah, see? It's a very familiar with this pog game. And sometimes the pog game comes with that as a consequence. <laughs> it's just a shelf life. Yeah. So it can't all be cocoa. Yeah, tonight I will simply say to Ted, does this smell funny to you? Mm. Yeah, but what is the date on it? Guys, my awesome wife, Sheila, turns 49 today. She would love some turtle sex along with a bong rip and a suck it up cupcake. Thanks, guys. That from Tony. <laughs> I wonder if he meant she literally wants turtle sex and a bong rip. Or a so suck it up, cupcake. That would, that would change everything. How do you guys feel about a Sheila? About a Sheila? Yeah. You mean your name is Sheila? Yeah. Uh, I mean. Good time. Yeah. I feel like you're a good time. Good time, Sheila. I know I'm going to regret saying this, but I don't know if I know any Sheilas. Yeah, you know one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the Outback Steakhouse. Back in uh, in Baltimore. Remember uh, skinny black chick, short hair, glasses, a little bit older. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, She was All real right. nice, but yeah. you would never F with she her. She looked like a librarian. She did. You know what I mean? Like the kind that would just, or a teacher who would wrap the back of your hand with a ruler. She looked like Dion Warwick if Dion Warwick's hair was still black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, I- she was very nice, but I was scared yeah. of her. Oh, no, no, no. She was like she was like the mother that would say, hey, man, you're in trouble. I just hit on her daughter all the time. Daughter said, oh, I was, yeah. I was like, man, you got a smoking daughter. She was like, no, honey. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, just, oh. no, honey. <laughs> oh, Charles, I want to celebrate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> want to celebrate my wife Annie's 55th birthday today. She's put up with me for 27 years now and gave birth to all three daughters. Without any medication. Second and third were twins, too. She didn't scream or nothing. Second one came out sideways. <laughs> she is definitely my better half, working hard each day so I can stay home with the kids and play with my hot rods. Absolutely amazing. Also has a twin sister who is unattached, so I kind of have a spare wife. Should anything happen? <laughs> can I get some of thrill shotgun blast to keep the horny boys away? Rock on, bitches. That from Randy. Get! Get! Hi guys, here you go! Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you! Yaz, a dirty Germans, brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, uh, Schweinefleisch. Couple extra emails, guys, on the uh, not so clean underwear. We had a story the other day where a company's come out with underwear that you can basically, they, they self clean themselves. You can wear them for days, et cetera, et cetera. Every day for weeks or right. months at a time. So guys, I got curious and looked up the so-called self-cleaning underwear. Other issues aside, the design uh, designer doesn't appear to have accounted for the existence of vaginas. The model shown is for men, and he mentions that it's critical to be extra clean behind and suggest using a bidet. But as uh, vaginas are also essentially self-cleaning, women will always have something down there, even if it's not that time of the month. So even if we accept their other claims, this product is basically only targeted toward men. Maybe they should do a bit more research next time. That from Kari. Oh, speaking as a guy, who cares? <laughs> Were we talking to you, Carly? <laughs> Kari, I don't think. Kari, you want, I don't think. You want, I don't think you want to tell anybody uh, that. Uh, in fact, these underwear that you're wearing have not been washed or changed in eight days, thanks to these self-cleaning <laughs> Honestly, underwear. Honestly, when Thrill brought it up, I assumed it was only for guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because I feel like there's some dude out there that's like, ah, self-cleaning for eight days. I'm in. Yeah. And even if a chick told you, like, listen, I, I, in the spirit of honesty, I've been wearing the same underwear for 21 days yeah. in a row. Like, don't care. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't care. <laughs> Take them off. Whatever. Fellas, I've been seeing a lot of bras that took into consideration <laughs> dudes, Kari. <laughs> Fellas, I've been a listener for years, and I think you guys are hilarious. Over the years, I've heard you guys mention how good the food at Cheats is for being a gas station. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, I recently moved to Pennsylvania. I finally got to try it today. I never imagined a gas station could have good food like that. We told you. It'll definitely be a good spot for the munchies when I'm stoned or hungover food. I'll keep up the great work, and i rock on, bitches. Bro, you can stop there on the way home and make that family dinner, and no one in your family will complain. That from us, uh, Spencer, in Pennsylvania. I- I've done it all. I've done cheats uh, with somebody else driving after a few beers. Mm-hmm. I've done cheats hungover and just on a road trip. Just like, there's a sheets. Let's Jeez. stop. Yeah. You got to do it, man. Yeah. 
Subject, happy Chinooka. All of the I started listening to you guys a few years ago on KGON happy here Chinooka. in Portland, Oregon. And now listen to the podcast daily on Radio.com. Well, on Sundays, there's another station down here that uh, replays the top 40 Billboard countdowns with Casey Kasem. Mm-hmm. All right. Every week they pick a countdown from a year in the 80s or whatever week they're in. And uh, today's countdown was from the week ending February 23rd, 1980. Okay. And number four was none other. Then Smokey Robinson with the song <laughs> Cruisin'. While it's a great song, the only thing I, I kept thinking about was his butchering of Happy Chinooka. Happy and how Chinooka. the men's room and the listeners troll him every day about it. Oh, by the way, number one that week, Crazy Little Thing Called Love by Queen. Crazy the little first thing. number one hit in America. <laughs> On a side note, uh, that week, 1980, I was in the third grade in an elementary school in Yakima. Our teacher had a swap paddle with air holes hanging behind his desk to keep mm-hmm. us in line. Good times. Rock on, bitches. That from Scott. Now, the men's room wants to know, who sucks last? Yay! Time for who sucks last. Tina Torho, you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. All of them suck to some degree, but it is up to you to figure out, out of the three stories, which one sucks the least. Now, if you like KISW on Facebook, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yes, indeed, and today we get sticky international style. Yeah. But let's start closer to home in Wisconsin, where three women exacted revenge on a cheating husband because they discovered that he'd been sleeping with all of them at the same time. So what do they do? They super glued his private parts. The angry women lured the father, uh, let's see, Danessa Davis, to a motel. Now, the ambush was set up by the man's wife after she discovered that he'd been cheating on her with as many as five women. Which leads me to believe that his privates were already sticky. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, police are now searching for the scorned wife after she disappeared from the family home after the assault. He's recovering in a hospital. He had to get treatment. He got to super glued his penis to his stomach. Took place uh, after his wife lured the husband to a motel. Two other women walked in. He voluntarily was tied up thinking something freaky good was going to happen. But no, it was freaky bad. They even pointed a gun, A, to his head at one point and to his penis at a different point before they left him tied to the bed with his penis. Super glued to his stomach. Sorry. <laughs> we now go to Rwanda, Africa. Where 36-year-old Dennis Mumo, he was arrested by police after he used super glue to assault and seal his wife's vagina shut. Oh, my God. Because he got news that she was seeing other men. Now, the man was always away from home. He was working. He got back and to find out that his wife was seeing other men. And he decided to seal her private part with super glue before he had to take another trip. Now, she was taken to the emergency room. Suffer medical complications and excruciating pain, prompting his immediate arrest. Now, when giving a statement, he confessed that he was guilty of gluing her genitals, but only because he believed that she was being adulterous, particularly after he found some texts with photographs and the, quote, next week would be more fire from his wife to another guy. Police said he'll face charges of domestic violence. So we have a penis glued to his stomach. We have a vagina uh, glued shut. Now we go for the eyes. We go to India. We're an angry lover. She was mad because the man in her life was choosing another woman as his wife. Sorry for the rhyme. So what did he do? He poured super glue into her eyes. I'm sorry, she, the scorned lover, poured super glue into the eyes of his new wife. She was angry over the marriage. And the thing is, she's also a friend of this guy's sister. So when she showed up at the house in the post-wedding ceremony, of course they invited her in. No problem at all. As they got drunk and started to pass out and fall asleep, she went to the bride's room, cut off her hair, and glued her eyes shut. Oh, my God. The family responded by, the family realized what she'd done. They managed to get a hold of her uh, before the cops got there. She was beaten up and held hostage through the night until police arrived the following day, and they arrested her. So we got a lot of super glue going on. Whoa. This yeah, is heavy-duty stuff all the way around. And it's all about sex, right? So you got the cheating husband. He might be seeing up to five additional women. So his wife, along with two accomplices, super glue his penis to his stomach. Guy in Africa comes home from uh, another work trip, whatever, finds out his wife is cheating on him. What does he do? He glues her vagina shut. We go to India. There's two women in this guy's life. He marries one. The other's not happy about it. What does she do? Glues her eyes shut. Super glue. What can it not do? <laughs> I can name a few. <laughs> well, I'll, oh God, I'm going to try to break this down the best I can. I mean, I really, I, I'm t- okay with the male genitalia. Mm-hmm. That is external. There might be some burning involved, 
But I'm sure there's some type of solution because we knew the story about the woman who super glued her hair, but she had to go to a plastic surgeon in Gorilla Glue, California. Hair so it's Gorilla Glue, not super was, glue. But this is on the outside. So when you're talking about your eyes, they did manage to or get female genitalia. You're talking about something that could go internally. Could, now look, they managed to get his penis unglued from his stomach. They managed to unglue her vagina. I don't have any follow up, so I don't know if there's any complications from that. And the story out of India, all I know is that the woman who glued the eye, the woman's eyes shut, she was arrested. No word on the woman whose eyes were glued shut. Okay. Hmm. This might sound like a strange question, but has anybody ever glued this door shut? <laughs> I recognize the scent. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know. This is tough. I it think is the woman. Tough. I think the woman. That put the glue in the eyes is the worst. All right. And cut the woman's hair. That cut her hair and glued her eyes. Right. And that I think guy her motivation was, is the worst. That guy sure. was seeing two women, but it wasn't like he got... I don't know. For some reason, that one seems like the passion should be less. Right? Because, like... You're not married. You're not married. You knew he was seeing this other chick. Right. And then he chose her. And then you super glued her eyes <laughs> and cut her hair off. Yeah. That's pretty bad. So I think that's the worst, even though she probably got, they probably beat her up and then now she's in jail. Except the story just says, eh, she was beaten up and held hostage. That means it was I don't, pretty severe. This is the hardest one ever. Hey, in my mind, I, think, I mean, like I know. And you can't just say tie. This isn't soccer. Huh. He's still got a point. It's got a draw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a home match, right? Uh, let's see here. Somebody does point out here, uh, you know, kind of. Wish my ass was long enough to get glued to my stomach. Okay, I think based on circumstances and the amount of women, uh, men, uh, women that this uh, guy was sleeping with with the married wife, I think that one sucks the least. She's getting revenge. It's, it's five different guys. Yes, she came up with a crazy plot to do it. I mean, somebody here, but agrees. for the most part, he might not have deserved that much punishment, but he got something that he deserved. Where the woman. She just was, the guy said he wanted to marry her in India, and she didn't know any different, and mm-hmm. she just started drinking and having fun. Uh, yeah, what I about mean, Africa? Yeah. So the, uh, here's the deal. I, that's again, terrible. I think the India thing from India is the worst, because he was dating both. She right. got mad. Right, right. And he cut a, another woman's hair off. Like I don't, I'm not a woman, but that almost seems like that might be more insult than Super Bowl in somebody's eyes. So I, I'm at kind of the same thing with Miles. I'm not... They seem about even. That guy's wife was cheating on him. But somehow it just seems worse to to super glue clothes, a vagina, than it <laughs> right. does to the get, pe- the, penis. get the I super agree. glued penis off my stomach. Now, I have to, I have to say something else. I mean, it's I'm, a difficult way he's going to argue it. I right. think, I you think, can make either statement. You're like, I, think, eh. I, think, I think penis on the stomach, okay, I think that sucks the least. But I will say this. Because he has a big enough penis. If she is smart and she was being spiteful, she would have excited him first. She Before did. Or she glued it to a She stomach. did. Okay. That's the whole thing. So Remember, they tied him to yeah, the right. bed. Exactly. Got him around. That way, you know, like, yeah. it's all over. You're just like, ah, because it's trying to go back to where it was. Right. But it can't because it's all up there. That's kind of funny. Most people agree. <laughs> all right. Most people agree that the penis is the least. Okay. Nobody's happy with today's selection. No, no, no. And trust me. That one is flat, too. Like, I am not happy with that <laughs> yeah. at all. But I'm just like, I don't. So, so it's about closing a woman's private parts with glue just feels yeah. so Thank painful. You. Thank you. And I've spent my life yeah. trying to get them to open them for me. Yeah. Debate uh, continues on Who Sucks Less. If you like KISW on Facebook, you are listening to The Men's Room. New on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future. And Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit curiositystream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying Black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the Black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Well, great balls of fire, Bubba. What happened, Bilford? That crazy son of a sow blew right through that four-way stop of Main Street and plowed into my cowboy Cadillac. Your what? My pickup truck. And I'm pretty sure my leg is broken, Ted. 
Oh, quit your bitch, Buford, to talk with those side busters at the Advocates Law Firm. When I got busted up last month, well, shoot, they made sure those snakes at the insurance company played fair. Boy, howdy. Even that creepy so-and-so Kyle earned his keep. So if you get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. You're in the men's room. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. Coming up in just minutes, we will drink, we will toast for the shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. But first, a quick check in with Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, the National Weather Service sent emergency tornado warnings to the cell phones of a million people in Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas. It was supposed to be a test. Oopsie doodle. Didn't they do that in Hawaii, too? Like a volcano warning or, no, warning or a tsunami warning? No, it was a nuclear missile warning. Oh, that's right. <laughs> kind of been a different, yeah. little different. A little bit. Either way, it's very perilous out there. Yeah, Our bad, our bad. Sorry. 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 I'll Sorry. take the tornado. <laughs> right. Yeah, give me the choice. Right. Sonic is teaming up with the brewery to make a line of hard seltzers bottled after their slushy flavors. Hmm. Huh. Who okay. is? Sonic. Makes sense. You ever, uh, right. you ever stop into a Sonic? You know what? I have never stopped into a Sonic. I've never been Me to a neither. Sonic before. I've got one. Well, yeah, I was just saying. I, I, I got to go. They have great tots. All right. Really? Yeah. Gotcha. I got one that's, that's close to my apartment, I, and it's right up the hill, and I got to go. But you can't live and die on tots. Like what? Like what? You know what I mean? Like honestly, I've only time, been to a Sonic. Tots. I've only been to a Sonic twice. I've heard okay. they got great shakes. They, I mean, it looks awesome. I've only so been here twice, and it's been. All Christ, the, 10, 12 years? Wow. All the things okay. but the main stuff is good. Is that what you're saying? They got great shakes. They got See, great I, don't, I don't know what they're known for. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what they're known for either. The hot dogs, the hamburgers, what, I guess. You know what? Just for you, Miles, I'll go I'll go on, on the experiment. I'll, I think I'll it's 50-50. You know. Typically, a drive-in is equal hot dog compared to equal hamburger. Because they advertise everything. Onion rings, yeah. you know. True. I mean, it can't be bad. I mean, I'm curious. The commercials are great, and, and yeah. the food looks fantastic. I've right. just never actually pulled in there, so i got to get the Not shot. Once in my life. If they have, like, an extensive <laughs> jack-in-the-box style menu where they got more stuff than you think they yeah. do, or putting cheese and bacon on fries, or, you know, all that kind of crap. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm going to Google their menu now. Do it, man. It's massive. Amazon. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Amazon recently changed the logo of their phone app, but had to tweak it after people said it looked like it had a Hitler mustache. <laughs> You looked this thing up a little bit earlier. I did. I, did. I, did. I didn't actually see it. Does it actually hold true there? It does because any anything that remotely looks like a Hitler mustache looks exactly like a Hitler mustache. What was it? Yeah, the Amazon you know, what? Right. They're they're the the logo for their uh, their their phone app. Oh, okay. So right. it's got the piece of tape from the package that's over the top. I can see it. It's blue. But again, if you remotely look like a Hitler mustache, it is a full-on Hitler mustache. The thing is, is that I still don't see that their their little swing there as a smile. So the stash on top. You don't see that as a smile. I mean, it I, looks like a smiling Hitler. I fathom that it has a smile to it, but honestly, I'm not looking at that thing and hey, that's a Hitler right there. I mean, I don't assume it is a Hitler, but right. I think, man, oh man, I wonder if anyone noticed that it looks like Hitler. It's like one of those. What's the, the name of the test where you look at a blotter and you? Yeah, uh, the Rorschach, Rorschach test. Rorschach test. Yeah. I didn't see it at first, and I'm like, oh, okay, I see what they're saying. I can now. see what they're talking about. I just wouldn't actually, I don't think I would ever pull that out. Have you ever? And, and if you haven't, do yourself this favor, looked up, is it what? Cats that look like Hitler.com. Yeah. <laughs> I know how stupid it sounds. You will laugh when you go, these I'm poor cats. by the name alone. We need to cancel these cats. So, <laughs> right. I, would, I mean, I, I always think the Amazon thing is a smile, but I don't know. It looks like blue hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, looks you know you can put a, a set of eyes underneath that thing and it's a little little blue mohawk. It looks like Marge. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There we go. <laughs> now it's Hitler Marge. Way to go, Hitler Marge. There's a new beer made from. Are you ready for this? Oh no, Cadbury eggs. I mean, I might That's try no. it. It's no, be, it's I would be, try it. It's gonna be sweet. There is not a whole lot of good candy when it comes to the Easter season. The Cadbury egg is probably the worst among them. Sorry, I'm looking at cats that look like Hitler. The Cadbury egg is the is the uh, uh, candy corn of Easter to me. It, I don't I don't disagree that it is a lousy candy, but I would still try the beer. It still might be a good beer. They're not going to put that weird middle in there, man. You know what? I that's, always, that's the deal breaker. funny, too, is Cadbury chocolate is delicious. The chocolate is great, but the egg, no. Some people love them. Yeah. They're just, yeah, they're super sweet, too. I mean, there's a but market that for said, them. That's though, why they keep coming back. They make, like... Milkshake beers and everything else, so it's like milk sh- milkshake stouts. I don't know. Look, it's not my taste, but I'm just saying 
I can imagine that'd be good. I've always said that I won't say that I don't like something until I try it. I'm skeptical about that. <laughs> okay, that's fair. So. <laughs> He's even got the comb over. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm showing him cats that look like Hitler. I'm telling him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, cats. It's, it's life changing. <laughs> How would you like to have that cat? You know, he didn't have all those markings when they got him as a kitten. I can't imagine <laughs> that I'm at the SBCA. <laughs> all right, but what if you do if your kids are like, Dad? That's the one. Right? <laughs> like, guys, listen, man. That's your rainbow Janet. <laughs> hey. Like, hey, man, your cat looks like Hitler. Like, the kids fell in love with it. I would not have done it if not for the <laughs> I would never. Don't worry. He's not going to commit atrocities. Right. He's a cat. He's just going to be the regular douchebag. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Still, there's something about someone that says, you know what? Give me the Hitler cat. Yeah. There's something wrong with you, man. <laughs> uh, see, it says, working from home has made people like their coworkers more. <laughs> yeah, because you miss seeing normal yeah. people. <laughs> of course. Right. Oh, and they're not always by your cubicle. <clears throat> I was going to say, you probably deal with less of their BS, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and then they will less of yours. Like, right. everyone will be happy to see each other for a week. And on some level, people, like, working from home are going to be a little bit nicer, frankly. It's like, they haven't been sitting in traffic. They're not getting up early to do hair and makeup yeah. or mm -hmm. put, on a, yeah. put on a damn suit. So it's like, it seems reasonable that your coworkers wouldn't be as agitated in general. Stress, right? stress. Yeah. Sure. If nothing else, man, like you said, traffic, paying for parking. Take that out of the right. equation. Yeah. You're in a much better mood. Waiting for someone to show up because they're stuck in traffic for a meeting to start because they mm -hmm. need to be there or whatever the deal is. It's just, yeah. Now, the only reason you wait for a meeting is because people like me and Miles can't figure out Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know we're there. <laughs> Are those two other jamokes in there with you? Yeah.